All right, joining me now to discuss what's happening in BC as well as New Brunswick, I'm joined by Tom Mulcair. He is our CTV News political commentator and the former leader of the NDP. Good Monday morning to you, Tom. So let's start with the BC election. Results are delayed. We won't know probably for another week who will be the new premier. What do you make of this airtight race? Absolutely fascinating. And it's the second time in a decade where the Green Party apparently will be holding the balance of power. And I say apparently because, as you just correctly pointed out, there is a compulsory recount the minute there are fewer than 100 votes separating the first and second place. But in my experience, it's quite rare that a judicial recount changes anything. We actually won. The NDP won a seat back from the Conservatives in 2011 during the orange wave in Quebec by going before a judge and showing that some of the votes had been uh, thrown out illegally, but we were talking just about a handful of votes as a, as a difference. To turn these around, and they, they're, they're quite a bit higher than that, to turn these around, you'd either need somebody who had illegally rejected ballots or somebody had simply miscounted. So it's unlikely to change, in my experience. Doesn't mean that the lawyers who are going to be arguing that aren't going to be doing their best. But at the same time, what's fascinating to watch is twofold. On the one hand, we're seeing the same type of urban-rural divide that we've seen in other provinces. So go to Quebec. Francois Legault absolutely dominates in the rural areas outside of Montreal. Can't get anybody elected just about in Montreal. So, which is, you know, the greater Montreal area is about half the province. So it's, it's a very interesting thing to watch. Uh, ha ha very similar, the Conservatives, they're completely ruling the roost in, in rural BC, outside of the, the big city of, of Vancouver and, and Victoria. So it, it's something to see. It's also no, noteworthy that the, the Greens, with those two seats holding the balance of power, it happened to John Horgan as well. This is a very important issue for a lot of people in BC. They've watched David Eby's NDP on issues of Fossil fuels, for example, make the province's economy more and more dependent on, on fossil fuels and natural gas in particular, even though they fought hard against the Trans Mountain Pipeline, but it's there now and Trudeau bought it and has put it through. But more importantly than that, they've actually said that they were going to step back from BC's carbon tax. Now, BC's had a carbon tax was way ahead of the curve, way ahead of other provinces uh, on a carbon tax. And they said that they're going to go back on that if Poiliev ever removes the carbon tax nationally. So that for a lot of people was a failure. Uh, on a key environmental issue. And I think that David Eby was squeezed a bit by a resurgent Conservative Party and by some members of his base saying, hold on, that's not what we thought we were about. And uh, the Green Party holding the balance of power, well, it'll be another way of holding their feet to the fire on climate. Okay, so just to be super clear then for our viewers, when we're talking about an alliance, we're talking the Greens and Conservatives or the Greens or, and... No. No. There, I don't. I don't think that there's a snowball's chance that uh, that that the Greens would ever support the Conservatives because even though uh, you know the Conservative leader did everything he could to say that he's not a climate change denier, he's denying that you have to do anything about climate change, which is eh, pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that the the Greens know that they can probably influence David Eby's positions on on these crucial issues for future generations, and I think that that's where their support will go. They, they could finesse it and say it'll be on a vote by vote basis, but that would. In any event, Evie's going to be in a very uncomfortable position because anytime it's that close, Paul Martin went through this, vote by vote, day by day. All you need is for two people to get sick uh, and all of a sudden your government could be defeated. All right, we got to talk about New Brunswick. Uh, do you see yes. this race being as airtight? Will we know who the premier is tomorrow at this time? I think we will. You might have a few close votes as well. What was most interesting was to see the Liberal Party leader, Susan Holt, trying to pull herself as much away from Justin Trudeau as she possibly could. Mm -hmm. Just saying, I don't know who that guy is in Ottawa. I'm the Liberal leader here in New Brunswick. And so if she were to win, Trudeau would see it as a win. But anybody who's been following the election knows that if she wins, it'll be despite Justin Trudeau, not thanks to Justin Trudeau. With regard to Blaine Higgs, his positions were becoming sharper and sharper on the ideological right of the spectrum. He lost several members of his cabinet who didn't go along with him when he wanted to. You know, when you start targeting uh, 
uh, you know, LGBTQ people, you know, because you want to have a fight over pronouns in schools and protecting young people who are already in a very fragile situation, which is what most people want to do. He decided to use this as a political tool. And when, you know, when that type of human right becomes a political football, a lot of people take a dim view of it. But he's done a very good job on the economy. Uh, you know, he's had balanced budgets, if not surpluses year after year. So he would become the first person since Frank McKenna to win three consecutive mandates if, if he were to win. But I do know that the Liberals are putting on a, a very strong fight. So we'll see how it turns out in the end. All right, Tom, we'll be talking to you later this week. Tom is Tom O'Carris, our CTV News political commentator and the former leader of the NDP.